Okay, here I have a very interesting question for you guys. And this is about the compound interest formula. Check this out. Let's say I'm going to give you guys two options. Option one is I will give you $3,000 and I will give you a 4% annual percentage rate. Now that's option one. Option two, I will give you more principal, $4,000, but I will lower the interest rate a little bit, just 3%. And let's say both things right here, I'll give you the interest compounded monthly. So in this case, which option would you choose? And let's say you can have the money in there for as long as you would like. So what's your answer? Done? Okay, the answer should be, it depends. The two most powerful words for answering hard questions or like the answer to all the questions. It just it depends. Why? Because seriously, it depends. Because for example, if you only want to put the money in there for like one year, of course, option B is going to be better. Well, the second option. Yeah. However, though, I know some of you guys are saying, go ahead and choose option one because it has a higher interest rate. In the long run, this is going to be that. True that, but how long is long? Well, we don't know. And you know, sometimes that time is too long, so maybe you don't want to do it anymore. So let's find the time, how long it will take for both things to give you the same amount of money. So we will have to use the compound interest formula, and that is the amount that you are going to get equals the principal that you have times one plus the interest rate to R divided by how many times that we compound in a year, and then raise that to N, and then we multiply by T and how many years that you want to put in the account. Because it says these things are compounded monthly, so N will be 12. It will be compounded 12 times a year. Now, let's go ahead and set up an equation for the first one. The principal is $3,000 times 1 plus the interest rate, which is 0 0.04, and divide that by 12, and then we raise that to the 12th power. So this right here will give you the amount of money that you have in this account after T years. All right, and then let's go ahead and do the same thing for the second one. We will have $4,000 for the principal times one plus 0 0.03 for the interest rate divided by 12, and then also raise that to the 12th T's power. All right, now, we want them to be equal to each other, and this time will help us to make the decision much better. So how do we do it? Well, firstly, maybe you want to compute this on the calculator first, and if you do so, you will get 1.0033. And it keeps on going forever, but usually if you use four numbers after the decimal point, it's pretty good. So you run the answer to four decimal places. Right here, you will get 1.0025. And this one right here ends up very nicely. Okay, here we have the base inside already. Let me divide the 4,000 on both sides because I know 3,000 divided by 4,000. It's a much nicer decimal number. So let's go ahead and do that. So I will divide 4,000 on both sides right here and also right here. This and that will cancel. But in the meantime, I will also have to bring this to the other side by dividing. So let me put this one in blue. I will divide this by 1.0033, also raised to the 12th t power. Don't forget about that, because this whole thing is together. Go ahead and do the same thing here, 1.0033, and then raise that to the 12th t power. Then this and that will cancel. Yeah? All right. On the left hand side, it's pretty much 3 divided by 4, you get 0 0.75. And on the right hand side, we will have what? Well, here's the deal. Because both of them are raised to the 12th power, so we can still maintain the 12th power. And for the inside, we just have to go ahead and work out 1.0025 divided by 1.0033. And let me tell you, that will be approximately, right, all this is just approximation, 0 0.9992. And we can put this number inside, 0 0.9992. Again, when the powers are the same, and if they are dividing, you can just divide the base 
by the base like that and the rule is because we are using this when we have a when we have this when we have a to the x power over b to the x power if they are the same exponent you can just go ahead and do a divided by b first and then raise to the x power so that's how exactly how we did that right here and now we have a much better looking exponential equation the t is still in the exponential so to solve this we will have to take the logarithm and let's just go ahead and do log on the calculator like log so nothing too special just like this all right now Put this power to the front and perhaps let me write that down first so right here i will get 12t times log of this number 0 0.9992 and that's equal to that which is log again this means log base 10 on the calculator and we have 0 0.75 if you want to use natural log that's totally okay just make sure that you have the same log on both sides here this is t and it's being multiplied by 12 and this number therefore all we have to do is to divide both sides by 12 so that this and that will cancel and also log of 0 0.9992 so that this and that will cancel and here we have log of 0 0.9992 all right here you can just go ahead and use a calculator entering log of 0 0.75 and divide it by this and that but because this and that on, on the bottom make sure when you enter it on the calculator you put a big parenthesis around that 12 times that all right so it's a common mistake all right so on the left hand side we will get the t by itself and on the right hand side if you use a calculator i'll tell you t is approximately 29.95 of course, you can put on more digits, but this is the final answer. Two decimal places is okay, and the unit for this is years. So about 30 years. So for the people who thought that, just go for the higher interest rate in this situation. Well, you will have to wait about 30 years in order to catch up with the second account, the second option. So now, what would you choose? Let me know. Hmm. <gasps>